Mr. Majeski's Anatomy 32 class, Chapter 5, Part 1. So we will be talking about the integumentary system, which consists of the skin and the layer below the skin, known as the subcutaneous layer. Now the functions of the skin include thermoregulation, that's regulation of our heat in our body. And this is achieved by sweating, we know that helps us to cool down, and also by adjusting the blood flow to the surface of the skin. Second, the skin also acts as a blood reservoir. At any time, there's approximately 8 to 10 percent of your total blood volume within the skin. Third, it is involved in the very important function of protection. The skin is basically what's keeping the outside away from getting inside us. And this includes protecting, protecting us from invasion by microbes, by acting as a barrier. It also prevents damage from abrasion because we have a layers of dead cells at the very surface of our skin. It protects us from heat and chemicals to some degree, and also UV light. Also within the skin is the cutaneous sensations. That's the sensations of tactile and thermal origin. And next there's also a small amount of excretion and absorption occurring at the skin. For instance, when you sweat, you are releasing some water and electrolytes. And also your skin can release heat. And as for absorption, it is possible for lipid sol soluble materials to pass through the skin into your body. This is sometimes used with some medicinal applications, but overall it's a pretty minor function of the skin. And then finally, the skin is also involved in the synthesis of vitamin D. So within the skin is a precursor to vitamin D that when exposed to UV light becomes activated and will eventually become vitamin D inside the liver. So here are two images. The one on the left is of a cadaver with its skin intact. So you can see the epidermis and below that would be the dermis. And then on the right is that same cadaver with the epidermis and dermis removed so that you can see the subcutaneous layer which is composed mostly of adipose tissue. The subcutaneous layer is also known as the hypodermis layer. In this image you can see some of those various layers stacked on top of each other. You have the epidermis as most superficial, the dermis is next, followed by the subcutaneous layer, and then the deep fascia which we know to be connective tissue, and below that muscle. Now the integumentary system is composed of three main layers. You have the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. The epidermis and dermis together form the skin. You also note that the dermis is broken down into two sub-regions, the papillary region, which is more superficial, and the reticular region. So when looking at the epidermis, you see that it is composed of four main kinds of cells. Keratinocytes, which is the dominant or most populous kind of cell, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, and Merkel cells, usually associated with a sensory neuron. The keratinocytes are arranged in many, many layers within the epidermis. And the keratinocytes, as they get closer and closer to the surface of the skin, uh, produce keratin, which is key to their protection function. They also produce lamellar granules, which are water repellent cilient that keeps, um, well, keeps water out. The melanocytes are the cells that produce the pigment melanin. And it is this pigment melanin that protects us from damage by UV light. And the melanins, melan melanocytes will transfer this pigment into the keratinocytes. So the melanocytes produce it and then move it to the keratinocytes. Also have the Langerhans cells, which participate in an immune response against microbes. So they are technically part of the immune system if we counted that as a category. And then there are the Merkel cells. The Merkel cells detect the touch sensation, so they are receptor to something touching our skin and they contact 
a adjacent sensory neuron and they do this at their tactile disc so basically one part of their uh, plasma membrane which is in contact with the sensory neuron is the tactile disc another name for the Merkel cell is a type 1 cutaneous mechanoreceptor so the epidermis has a few different layers or stratum. The deepest layer is called the stratum basal, and it is a single row of cuboidal or columnar keratinocytes. And the cytoskeleton within these epithelial cells include keratin intermediate filaments, which are part of the cytoskeleton. And it is here and only here that new keratinocytes are produced. And also found on this layer are melanocytes and Merkel cells. The next stratum is composed of 8 to 10 layers of keratinocytes and is known as stratum spinosum. Here the keratinocytes will begin to join tighter together by having their keratin intermediate filaments insert into the desmosomes, which are a type of cell junction. Also located in this area are the Langerhan cells that will be phagocytosing any microbes that manage to make it this far in. Also is the melanocytes projections. And so it is at this layer, the stratum spinosum, that the melanocytes transfer their pigment to the keratinocytes. The next layer up is the stratum granulosum. And here it usually consists of about three to five layers of flattened keratinocytes that are undergoing apoptosis, or programmed cell death. Now, as they're undergoing this process, uh, they're also producing keratin halin, which is a protein in the cells. And this will take the keratin intermediate filaments and reassemble them into the keratin proteins. Also at this time, the lamellar granules release their lipid-rich secretion that pro provides for a water repellent sealant to the skin. The next layer up can sometimes be the stratum lucidum. However, the stratum lucidum is only present in thick skin. That's the skin of your palms and the soles of your feet. If it is present, it'll be four to six layers of clear, flat, dead keratinocytes. And then finally is the stratum corneum. Now the stratum corneum can vary greatly in how many layers of cells there are, but on average it's 25 to 30 layers of flattened dead keratinocytes. Here the plasma membrane encloses basically just packets of keratin. And sometimes these cells are known as corneocytes. And say you have an abnormal thickening of the stratum corneum, that's referred to as a callus and is caused by extensive friction to that part of the epidermis. Now growth of the epidermis goes from deep to superficial. As I said before, the keratinocytes are only undergoing mitosis at the stratum basal layer. And whenever a new cell is formed, it's pushed up into the stratum spinosum, and so the cells then in the stratum spinosum get pushed up and some of them will end up in the stratum granulosum and so forth and so forth. And as the cells pass through these various layers, they undergo keratinization. That is, their keratin intermediate filaments are slowly converted into keratin. Also, it's worth pointing out that the epidermis is avascular. You will not find any blood vessels here which is why you can scratch your skin and instead of having blood come out you can have it just ooze a little bit. And here's just another image from a slide of the various layers of the skin. I mean, I mean excuse me, of the epidermis. And here is a picture of the thick skin on the left where you see it has an extremely large stratum corneum and a very small thin stratum lucidum versus on the right the thin skin which does not have a stratum lucidum and its stratum corneum is relatively small and thin. 
Now we're going to move on to the dermis. This is the layer that is below the epidermis. It is composed of strong, dense, irregular connective tissue. It is much thicker than the epidermis, and it includes such cells as the fibroblasts, which help maintain the strong, dense, irregular connective tissue, as well as immune surveillance cells that water, wander throughout to engage in phagocytosis. It also has blood vessels, nerve cells, glands, and hair follicles, and it comes in two sublayers. The superficial sublayer is called the papillary region, and in the papillary region, you will see what is called dermal papillae, which are small finger-like projections that push up into the epidermis. And it's the dermal papillae that help increase the surface area between the two layers to help keep them in contact with each other. Also, you'll find in here many, many capillary loops that will, will carry blood, can carry blood to the surface, um, as well as corpuscles of touch, which detect touch sensations, and free nerve endings, which can do thermo uh, sensations. Deep to that region is the reticular region. It is attached to the subcutaneous layer that is below it. It consists of thick bundles of collagen fibers, fibroblasts, and macrophages. It also has blood vessels, nerves, hair follicles, and many glands, such as the sebaceous gland, or oil gland, and the pseudophorous glands, or the sweat glands. Note there doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, reticular fibers in the reticular region. Now, you can see on your skin of the palm of your hands and soles of your feet what are called epidermal ridges, but we most likely know as fingerprints and footprints. And basically, these are formed only in thick skin, and that's because they have um, more extensive papillaries pushing into the epidermal areas to better keep the two la layers attached. And they form as basically ridges. Um, they possess more sclec glands than other parts of the skin. And they also have an increased number of corpuscles of touch. And another function of having the fingerprints is that it also increases the grip of the hand or the foot. Skin grafts. Well, it looks just like it looks there. They have a little skin peeler known as a dermatome, which can remove healthy skin from a donor site that can then be used elsewhere to cover a wound, say from extensive burning in another area. Now, we talked about melanocytes. Well, they are the cells that produce the pigment, and they are basically the same in all people. We all have about the same number of melanocytes. But in people who have darker colored skin, their melanocytes produce more melanin, and so are transferring more of it to the keratinocytes. You can also see an uptick in melanin uh, production in places uh, referred to as freckles and age spots. And basically, they help reduce the risk of skin cancer. It's also worth noting that a mole is basically a localized benign overgrowth of a melanocyte. You can also look at the skin and see uh, some diagnostic clues. Uh, if your skin in, say, your fingers or toes are blue or cyanic, cy cyanotic, then they lack enough oxygen. Uh, jaundiced or yellow skin can indicate the uh, presence of liver disease. Erythema or redness of the skin can be a sign of damage or overexposure to heat or the sun or an allergic reaction. And pallor or a of the skin could be caused by anemia or by shock. The layer below the skin is the subcutaneous layer. It is not part of the skin, but various fibers from the dermis anchors the skin to the subcutaneous layer, which in turn connects to the underlying fascia. It also serves as a storage site for fat and large blood cells. It contains the encapsulated nerve endings or lamellated corpuscles that are pressure sensitive. And it also acts as a shock absorber and insulation. And that's it for the integumentary system in this lecture.